Mi, 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 mi. Oh. Hey, hang on. Episode number 80. We're here, we're a touchline rant. We're coming to talk football. Football and such. Go follow us on Twitter at a touchline rant and Instagram at a touchline rant everywhere. YouTube's. Oh, Today yeah, we're going to be discussing the FA Cup, the upcoming semi finals, the race for top four, the relegation. Race. Will race come into play later Re- on? Will it? Well, it might do. It might do. Um, Champions League's coming back and we got a doozy of a reader's wives question. So hang around. Oh, oh, oh. Easy Huge excited. of truth. But yeah, hang around. That's what's happening. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you very much. Number 80. Oh, YouTube as well. YouTube as well. If they win the league title and the Champions League, mm. as well as the League Club, the Cup, I know it's not seen it as uh, this prestigious as the FA Cup, and rightly so. However, I would argue that would be up there with the treble winning year for United as a, an achievement as a squad. They are exceptional. However, just they're, they're doing my head in a bit. All right, okay, okay. They're just doing my head in. It's just fall out of something. It's like that kid that you went to school with who was really good looking, <laughs> got all the women that he wanted, had <laughs> women. rich parents and a big house, and he was well looked after. Pack it in. Liquid a, football. A wooger. <laughs> Everyone really wants Liverpool to just sneak in there now over Man City, don't, oh. you, don't you think? Best of a bad bunch. Who would you rather? Anyone but Liverpool. I'd rather back on football this. as a sport collapsed than either of them win it again. Liverpool, liquid football loving. Yeah. I'd you got to be genuinely honest. I'd rather Man City win it. But, 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 Liverpool have been brilliant. The difference now is that Liverpool are doing that. They're sneaking those wins that usually you go, that's what champions do. You know, the sneaky 1 nils and things Hand like that. The and the two ones that, you one know, nil. they're this championship material. But Man City have been so perfect that they're destroying teams. Man City probably going to win, but it'll be nice, a nice thing. If I'm brutally honest. Okay, that's rounded up nicely. <laughs> Right, this is my little Cardiff City section where I'm going to tell you why Cardiff City are going to stay up. Oh, brave. Anyway, I just said it. So That is brave. So that's that. Go on then, convince I thought they me. were absolutely gutterly undeserved to go down to the Chelsea game. Mm. Uh, a contentious issue at very best. Also brings in, no, one's, no one really mentioned it, like VAR for Christ's sake. No one's actually... Mm. That would have been huge at this start, at the end of the... Even if they got one, they still could have been a bit deflated from it. I just don't like the how they're written off in in the public no. in the public okay. within within the uh, media circle. Go on, then. You got you got ten seconds to convince me, Cardiff, for staying up. Ready? Go. Okay, Cardiff staying up. Yeah. If you don't believe that, you're mm. against Cardiff City. Do you think Cardiff City are going to stay up? Oh, you've outboxed me there. Okay. I don't want to be why against you, Cardiff City. Why would you City. bet against Cardiff City in this situation? I w- I, because I think that five point, being five points off safety at this... That's two games this... of a run which they've just got a whole major ass. Yeah, look, they still could. They still could because Brighton are losing, you know, games as well. Uh, Burnley aren't that far ahead of them. It's a shame, but look, from a Cardiff perspective, it's a shame that Southampton and Burnley won. It's a, it's a damn shame. Because... That's put so a bit again. of a yeah. It's put a bit of a gap there. Yeah. Um, I'm hopeful because I okay. think they'll be a huge success if they do. Obviously. Sum it up. One word. Cardiff City till I die. But that Cardiff result, as much as obviously we're from Cardiff ourselves, we so are. It's, That's where it's, we do this from. Cardiff. We do this. So Cardiff City. Yeah, FC. We, we've we podcast at we Cardiff City it. Football Stadium. You know, we've been invited there. We've had we we've got smelt these, Neil Warnock's musk. What I like about Arsenal and respect about Arsenal is they're not the sort of club to go out and spend... They're not a PSG. They're not a Man City. They don't go out and they go, right, we'll spend £230 million on him. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Arsenal are the club where they go out and they spend £60 million, say, on mm-hmm. a Bamian. But uh, Luis Figo, you can't all be Galacticos. However, you can be superb players. A Bamian is that. He's not a Galactico. He's a superb player. 
That would have been huge. A Galactico player is Paul Pogba. 100% he would go to Real Madrid as a record signing this summer. 100%. But is he as important to the side as Marcus Rashford, who's homegrown? So that's a pavon. He's, he's exceptional. He's not Galactico. Because Rashford ain't going anywhere. Arsenal have a home base that seems solid. And when they add players, it's, they, they always sign players who will fit into that that uh, that homely feel of the club and fit their ethos. So they sign Guendouzi, they do not go all out and try and sign Paul Pogba. That's why the Luis Suarez mm. transfer didn't make sense to me, but the Jamie Vardy one did. Because the Jamie Vardy one, I could see him, I could at the time, not now. That was weird. That was but I could see him gelling at that club because of the type of club Arsenal is. So you consider Arsenal's recruitment more thoughtful? They need to continue this great tactical uh, this great transfer business which began this summer and obviously now uh, Sven Mislintat has left mm. Arsenal as recruitment because he didn't agree you know they made other people they brought other people in and it changed the way that they do their business um, what they need to do is hire a director of football as soon as they hire a director You're of football for them. you wanted that one at Man United no you? yeah I still we you still need one at Man United because the way that the boardroom has changed at both those clubs they have too much of a say and a manager doesn't have enough so you have to have the go between because the manager just wants the best players for his team yeah the board and the chief executive want the best transfer that's going to make financial sense managers don't care about that managers just want to sign the best players in the world they don't care about financial sense but a director of football is the person who goes right you've got to meet me in the middle <laughs> both of you he mm. wants to sign this player for 200 million he wants to sign this player because he's great on the left wing but he's going to cost 200 million yeah and the board will say we'll tell him no tell him we'll buy him more so you want a way. more business related you have to have half and half in today's game if you're too that's good. so tough to do though yeah but clubs Why manage it I think, pe- manage I think people like fans you know forget it that it's a business football should be in its essence run 50% by the boardroom and 50% by the terraces that's the ideal scenario because they both want different things fans don't care how much he costs they just buy him he's great yeah the boards go i don't care how great he is i'm not spending that much money you have to have the middle ground and that's where a director of football comes in that's my take on the top four mm-hmm. that would have been huge but to wrap it up just shrug just... <laughs>we got a little bit of feedback. I love feedback. For this, but I do as well. I enjoy, oh, no. I I enjoy feel like as well. In my bones, I feel like this mm. was a good week. Peter and Love, again. Oh. Thoroughly enjoyed this week's session. Love it when you go knee-deep into analysis. Ronaldo, not sure which one, Okay. says, uh, this week's podcast was like listening to a clown running through a minefield. I mean, he's got a bit vague there, hasn't he? I think that's original. I don't Ronaldo. know what, I I don't think know that's what section he's on about. Danny Cadamartery. Sure. Solid as always. Solid, yeah. Mm. Uh, Danny Shitu, do mm-hmm. better. That's oh. not constructive at all. All right, Shitu. And Hans Sagers just says, wow. But, I mean, look, as always, oh, thanks, you know, thanks for the feedback. Guys. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, keep it coming. Keep it coming. We keep always it enjoy coming. it. Right. We're in uh, my little corner at the minute. You've got a corner now? Yeah, i got a corner. It's my reader's wife's corner. What does that mean? This means that... Every week on our Twitter feed at Attach Line Rant, um, I ask a question to our listenership um, and our followers, and they get back to me with their answers. It's a Ooh. question and answer segment. Okay. Um, this week, do you want to know what I asked them? What did you ask them this week? Right, I said, little role playing this week for them. You're a professional footballer earning a great wage at a huge club with multiple years left on your contract. Okay. Yeah, imagine it. Mm, yeah, but imagine. then another huge club want to sign you Ooh. and pay you a lot more money. Ooh. Do you I stay? Like money. Do you stay, or do you push for the move? That's the question that I posed this week. Now, do you want to answer, or shall I go straight to our listeners? <clears throat> I'd like to. It depends on. A lot of variables for me. I'm very fussy. Okay, right. You, I we, care who I play for, so I'd go the. I'd well, you with one. the bulk of our listeners. So I find a middle club which first, I half care about, and then take half the money. Okay, that's an interesting debate. 
uh, Chris Etchingham at C Etchingham 77 host of Man on the Post podcast yep. award winning yep. came to us and said I push for the move and money one career one chance to set up yourself your kids and your grandkids for life and give them better opportunities so he's gone take as much money as you can get so it's the Mido model no yeah so that's what he's taken he said get as much money as you possibly can do now make yourself massively massively rich and leave and because you're going to retire early uh, which Raj, lots of players actually do yeah you can say you can look, there's an argument to say that's what everyone does it's just on football it's a bigger scale um, Raj came in um, long time listener and contributor he came in and said if you have a connection to the club stay if not seek assurances that you will win something then give it a year push to leave next year if things aren't going on as planned and what if you're Harry Kane yeah well he would fall into the connection, the connection. to the clubs of state I would say um, shout out please shout out at the Gormley Saurus that's not his mm. actual name but no, yeah I thought at Peter Amore the Gormley Saurus um, far too many variables alright Gormley nice. Saurus pipe down uh Chelsea never leave never if you're playing at Chelsea you never leave obviously we know he supports uh, other clubs <laughs> come through the ranks question why wouldn't they give me a rise will I be first teamer in either team will the cash help my current club both in Europe playing professional position in both they're the variables that he mentioned previously in this tweet <laughs> <laughs> just a selection just a selection there Gormley yeah that's fine uh, Nathan who came to our live show he did Nathan yeah at well straight in <coughs> hello uh, at my boyhood club I stay offer from my boyhood club I go any other clubs discuss with the family and do what's best for them and he's coming with money isn't everything when you're on a, when you're on a hundred thousand a week there's a fifty to seventy five thousand pay rise can make much of a difference to your lifestyle or future i would argue yes because if i have a hundred pounds that's not as good as having 175 pounds it's just on a bigger scale like if you said to me i got 100 pounds and i went i got 175 you would go oh he's better he's got a better amount than me so get as much money as you can i wouldn't i'd say you happier the answer would no, be fundamentally okay, yeah. no. So when it comes down to brass tacks, yeah. there is a number of little variables that need to go there into is. it. Okay. Because will that kill kill your creative football soul? Yes, it will. Will that make you half a player? You yes, a it will. How many ta- how many more seasons can that continue before I have to fall through the ranks? So you have to balance those bits out if you're going to be truly happy yourself. All right. Are we know rich Tiffany? people. Can I we get know back to my people. <laughs> Wrap this up. I haven't finished. <laughs> Adam, uh, Bluebell's Adam, shout out. Mm-hmm. Shout out, shout mm-hmm. out. Ad- uh, humans 8. Each situation is different. If I was Hazard, I would 100% leave. He's achieved all he can there and needs to now better himself. Pogba, you can't turn down Madrid, can you? Okay. Hmm? I see what he means. You wouldn't know, would you? Uh, Jamie Welsh, Ice. Nice. Uh, if the first club was the club I'd started my career at, I would stay. But if I had no emotional ties, I'd be off. Footballers have short careers. I agree with him. You agree I with that? Really, yeah, I agree I thought, with him. But I think you'd be happier in your um, soul playing for. No, I soul. think it's. But if, if you were say, well, if you've got like, we the skill of Raheem Sterling. Okay, if we had the skill of Raheem around. Sterling at our age, mm-hmm. we'd be finished. We'd be re- probably retired now at our age, or we'd be nearing retirement. Think of that. Think how young you feel as a person in mid thirties. I don't feel old, mid thirties. But if I was a professional footballer, I'd be retirement age now. That's how short their career is. But you could we've retire had it. at that age. Yeah, but we've had it. That's what I mean. The more money you have in the bank, if you retire now, if I'm retired now, I'd be screwed. But if Raheem Sterling retires in ten years' <coughs> time and he's made a load of money, so but what life. you're forgetting is the plight of the artist in a, in a way, which is something which you don't see. That's why we asked the question earlier, are players seen as commodities now? And you have to say they are. They absolutely are. So if you look at it that way, then so be it. If you're a true, like, we consider football to be a form of artwork, right? Yeah. It's, it, it, it is motion. It is an play. artwork. It's, it, it, you can gather so much from it. It's a humanistic, human uh, thing where you can see 
like how people react and respond. And it's a big theatre overall because that's it as, is. as is life. Right. I've got two more responses that I want to read out. One from Adam Walker at the Grazing Shed. Shout okay. out. Shout out. He would say, I would leave 100%. Experiencing new cultures, playing with the world's best players, etc. But I would try not to be a sleazy dick about it and cut the platitudes out. Which I like. And can I, I give like you, that response a lot. We had a lot. Because that's real. Yeah. Look, we had a lot of responses to this question. An awful lot. So I know that I can't read them all out. However, thank you very much for getting in touch to everybody. If you want to get involved next Food week. Food for thought there for all yeah, of us. Yeah, if you want to get Food involved for next week. Then Are you an artist or a money grabber? Get in touch. One more. Last one that I'll leave you on was from Nicky Nacky New. Yeah who is the uh, club photographer at Newport County. Extremely good. Um, uh, Nick Knack New Picks, at Nick Knack New Picks is the Twitter handle, came in. What if that club offering the big money is also A, my childhood club, B, your home, uh, my hometown club offering me a chance to get back close to my family, the club that gave you a big break, first chance. Guess I'm trying to say, it's not always just about the cash. And I thought that would be a nice one to leave on. It is nice, yeah. It ties right into our commodities. Yeah, it's a uh, great one. So thank you very much to everyone who got involved in Reader's Wives this week. We'll be back maybe next week if we can think about a good enough who question. Who knows? Do you know what? If you have a question that you want to ask, just send it to me because it would help in Reader's Wives. We'll discuss it every week. Hey, do you know what it's time for? Mm -hmm. Huge if true. Oh, I've been waiting for the return of this. Huge if true. Hit me with a huge if true. A minute silent. So, uh... A moment come from HFS Loans League team, wow. Congleton, in 93. HFS Loans League? That was, a, a league. It was actual, actual wow. league. It was a league. Okay, right. team cut. So, when was hold it? in a minute silence. In 93, mm -hmm. way back. Oh, that's a lot of hold a minute silence before the match to yep. mourn the death of the club's oldest fan, who yep. reportedly passed away during the week. Okay. Uh, however... Public relations of Congleton needs to get their, their sources checked. Yeah. Do you know why? Why? After they, they, they forced into cancelling the minute silence when a fan, the fan, said fan, walked into the ground in his minute silence memorial. <laughs> Can so, you imagine that? So they got it so wrong yeah. that the guy that they were mourning actually walked, walked into through. the ground while they were holding a minute imagine silence. Imagine you were that him. guy and you walked oh, in. My. And you walked in. I'd have a complete existential crisis. Yeah. So imagine people's faces. I would. I'd disappear. I'd become a hologram on the spot. I'd be like, oh my God, have I died? <laughs> and that's our... Am I witnessing my life? That's it. Imagine that. And that would kill me. Huge if true. Pack it in.